be some darkness. Okay? And that darkness appears and saturates sometimes so that you can see the light. You couldn't see the light. You couldn't perceive the light. You couldn't embrace the light unless you were sacrificed. I like that word. Thank you, Father. In the womb of darkness. And in the womb of darkness is chaos. And that is where our creation comes from. My point in all of this, I don't have a point, but I'm going to make one up right now. Wrong comes to illuminate. You know, the truth is, wrong is always here, and we're calling it wrong, but it's not wrong. Any more than right is right. But we want to think that right is right and wrong is wrong. And so we can make that distinction, make that demarcation so we can puff ourselves up and say, see, I told you that this was right and this is wrong. And if you do this, this is going to happen. And if you do that, that is going to happen. Well, you don't need for me to tell you what is right or wrong. Because if you stick your hand in the fire, it's going to be burnt. Now that is not a punitive result. That is a corrective measure. That is the Rahu operating in your life. That is embedding in you not to put your hand back in the fire. But you don't need someone telling you that. You already know that, but it's not a knowledge of being able to communicate that. You have to experience. Experience is the only true teacher. Okay, let me see wrong. Well, since I dealt with wrong, let's deal. Since we know that wrong is that 31. Okay, Rahu? So let's see what. Right is. Right is at nine. How about that? Two nines, right side by side. Seven, eight, two. I love these words, huh? Just one vowel. If you've seen the other shows, you know what I'm going to do. Woo! Here we come. There's that nine. That's us. That's that hermit. That's that soul inside of us who desires this earth experience, desires all of the heartache, loneliness, despair, hunger, thirst, sexual um, cravings. Um, what are the rest of the things that harm us and hurt us and cast us down and leave us isolated and alone? The soul craves those things, craves them. And so the best place to get those are in that word and term you deem romance, affairs, certainly sexual affairs. So you get all, all bogged up and tied up and shriveled up and duped up and whatever else in these romantic affairs so that the soul can learn, well, how about experience? These earth lessons, feel them, and then when you're so bogged down in them and you're so saturated with all of the torment and the despair and the confusion, the soul hauls buggy and leaves you to fend for yourself. That's what you came here for. You're coming here to learn how to, those lessons, to learn how to be involved in various relationships, react and be totally convinced that it's all real and that it all matters and that somehow you're going to make a difference or that other person made a difference to you. Something. You've got to really, really, honestly, truly, truly believe it because that's the only way that you can differentiate between right and wrong in your own mind. 
So the soul brings you here so that you will feel that hurt and that pain and that loneliness and that despair and that embarrassment and that all the rest of the things. Okay, let's see why we want to be right. Why do we want somebody to know we're right? Why do we want to believe we're right? You know, along with that rightness comes you think you're smart, you're intelligent, you're um, intellectual. Oh, you've got it going on. You know how to direct something in somebody and somehow and sometime and some way. Truly. Most of all, you assert those um, ideas in marriage. You need to tell the other person how he or she's supposed to act and be and do. Not only in his or her life out there in the world, but to you. You're supposed to love me and comfort me and care for me and take um, concern over whether I'm hurt or whether I'm not. Why? What am I doing casting that particular obligation and responsibility and duty onto you? I have therefore stripped you of your own essence to come down here and to experience life. Experience it with me or without me. Just experience it. Okay, let's get back here. Okay, we got a nine as the heart of right. Now we're going after the personality. 16, 24, 26. No, Mitzi! No! How could that possibly be? Let me add it up again. 9 and 7, 16, 24, 26. Yes? Yes? Was anybody paying attention? Was anybody paying attention? Because if you were, you saw that some word up here had 26. Where was it? Come on. Where was it? Whoa. Whoa. What word had the same personality? I'm looking at Mitzi. This is wrong. Personality 26. This is the word right. Personality, 26. Hmm. So, if that's true, hmm, 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 that would mean that the personality of both right and wrong are the same. The same. The same. But it's your perception you are trying to make right wrong and wrong right. It's neither one. It's your perception that is off kilter. What we got here? We got a 35. And that happens to be an 8. Okay? 35. Well, this 26 that is the personality of both wrong and right, you know, 35 is an 8, 26 is an 8. Okay? So, this eight, with that wrong and right, right and wrong, right and wrong, wrong and right, should be a song. In the matters of what? Sex. You don't know a doggone thing about that. You just know the sensations and the cravings and the um, trying to put it in some kind of category to make it right or wrong whichever floats your boat. Death, you know nothing whatsoever about that unless you have died and come back again. Um, and there have been those gracious few who have as far as coming back to carry the message. I'm not talking, I'm not getting into reincarnation right now or the subject thereof or whether it's right or wrong, good or bad or whether it exists or don't. You know, that's another show. Sex, death, and money. Yes, yes, yes. Those three areas of our life that dominate and control our lives. We want sex. We want to um, stay off death, if you will. But that's a whole other story too. But anyway, we believe we want to stay off death. And we want to consume and um, hoard, if you would, our money. 
So our whole lives are governed by this sense of right. Uh, if I have enough sex and I don't die too young, too soon, and I have all of this money that will make me powerful and respected and honorable and all those things, then I will have control in my life and that is right. As far as what these numbers are saying for this particular moment. 35. Alright. But the personality remember of both wrong and right are governed by that same eight. Now, let's just play a game. I did it on a, another show and I talked about this eight, but I'm going to do it again. Okay? As above, so below. But this is the abyss. You know, where is that abyss? Inside of your mind, inside of your mind, there's not a single solitary thing that's going on out here that is like you think it is going on outside of here. Just like color does not exist out here, it is all of this firings in this electrical two pound mass going back here to the back of your head as a projector it is firings electrical firings but anyway and it is has been grooved like a record you've got these grooves and grooves and grooves going on in here because you've done things a certain way you've said things a certain way you believe things a certain way not even to mention what you've taken on from your parents and their parents and their parents and their parents so your grooves in this two pound mass of flesh that's the abyss that is it because your eyes continually betray you. Anyway, let's just play a game. And let's say that there is an above in the galaxy, and there is a below. We're also part of the galaxy, but let, we're just going to play this game right now just to make it work. So I'm going to, and this is the Earth. And here we are as humans, okay? And here we are up here as gods. Okay, and we say, we want, we let's say, you know, I want to know what it feels like to experience earth life. So, I'm just pretending. Well, in order for you to do that, you've got to cross that abyss. And you've got to forget, forget who you are, first of all. And you've got to learn what it is to be human. Now the only way to learn what it is to be human is to play the role of human and experience, experiment, I'm not going to say experience, experiment emotions. What, Paul? Hmm. Now, when I was a god, I don't know what emotions are. That's right. That's why you wanted to come here. That's why you wanted to come down here and learn and start saying and dictating and modulating and tabulating and demonstrating and castrating these ideas of wrong and right. Okay? You wanted to do that. So, playing the role of human. I'm going to see what that human is in a minute. All right. Let's do it. Let's play that role of human. Okay? Is this wrong? And this is right? Huh? Is it? Don't forget, that's the abyss. This is your mind. This is you telling you, oh, and others. You telling you what you should do 
and not do. I love that. And you only do that when it's convenient. You know, you can switch on a dime, whatever is going on with you at the time. But anyway, this is wrong and this is right. Okay, let's carry some of those wrong things. Oh, cross the abyss into the right. It's right. Yes, it's absolutely right that I eat a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts and not bear the cost of it because I enjoy it and that's what I want to do. Hmm. <gasps> Got to cross that abyss again. Oh no, I'm going to gain 10 pounds and I'm going to be sick and it's hard for my health. Now it's all wrong. But you know what? They really do taste good and maybe I could eat them sometimes and not all at one time. Cross it again. Right and wrong, and right and wrong, right and wrong, and right and wrong. And each time, depending upon how resistant you are, resistant, ah, resistant you are, these ideas get built up in your head. And you start doubting them, first of all. But you don't want to doubt them because you don't want to change. People don't like to change. You know, people don't change. Seasons do. So we hold on to them. You know, when you get in one of those rides at um, King's Dominion somewhere and you know it's going to drop you really quick and you squeeze that. You squeeze those handlebars because you know it's coming. You know it's coming. You just don't know when. But you get it so entrenched in your mind and then... These lessons come along. This Rahu shows up with these lessons that you've always believed something was right. You know, maybe you had what you thought was a fateful mate, and now that mate's no longer fateful. That's part of Rahu. That's part of those lessons. Now, how could that person who you loved and adored and worshipped and just thought was the um, son in your world, how could he turn so quickly or she turn so quickly and become the living devil who is responsible for all of your pain and agony and disappointment? Guess what? He or she didn't change. Your perception did. <laughs> 